You have a BlackBerry? How exciting. Remember how it was the first time you used your BlackBerry? Yeah, you were fumbling around for a couple days, weren't you? You would call the wrong people and such. Now the BlackBerry is a very, very uh, good piece of software. And yet the first couple weeks you're ready to throw it into the trash can. Now, after a few months, you love it. The same thing is with these online businesses. You gotta get in there, you can use it, and soon you find you love it. You also did some work with competencies where we would send out PowerPoints with just about four or five slides and saying this is a skill you need to mess with. Like, how do you find out who your password is? And we'd give them four or five slides and they'd do that. And every month we send out a PowerPoint telling them about stories. Stories that would change the way they look at things. For example, one of the stories would be, well, there was this patient that was in the waiting room. And she had waited a long time and was leaving really angry. She had waited all that time and couldn't wait any longer. But one of the receptionists said, you know, you can do that online. Stuff. Can you do that right now? And they did an online visit. By the time the patient got back to uh, work, uh, the prescription for her problem was in the pharmacy. Uh, that patient learned a couple of things. One, never go to the office unless you've gone online would be the first thing. Um, we then went through a period of testing, uh, no charging uh, people for two months. Our first online consultation looked at it like this. All of this was generated by the patient. I don't think a clinician in this room can make a note that this good. You know, you might add some more details that would personalize and that's fine. But this is a history that the patient furnished it. Look at it, it's documented how much pain it has. There's a little section in here where patients, they can write a few things just to help clarify things. <clears throat> but look at this, there's more. Have you ever seen anything that because they were able to ask the questions, we actually were able to, if we were to get an insurance form, we were able to say this is the amount of disability the patient has. This is all done by the patient. And so um, when I looked at this, I said, oh yeah, okay, I know what's going on here. This patient has back sprain and I treated her with some medicine. This is her response. I just got a call from the pharmacy. The two prescriptions will be ready to be picked up. What fast service? You'll find that when people go online, their service is faster than the telephone. It's incredibly quick. Um, and we'll explain some of the reasons why. And also I pointed out here that the patient was scheduled for an overdue mammogram. So that was our first patient. We then went into a billing phase where we looked at it and we felt that the margin on $35 was sufficient to make our, our ends meet. Uh, the billing people were very pleased that $35 was a great thing. It was the first time they felt that primary care had something that they thought could be consistently making some money. Uh, billing was the smoothest part of it. We didn't have a lot of complaints about cost. At the end of uh, this time then, uh, we had 1,400 registrations, 500 visits, and 110 buildings. So we were really rolling. I decided to take a trip, go down to Florida, enjoy life, and I got a phone call saying they're shutting down primary care online. I thought, who did we kill? Uh, well, what happened is we had a pause. A bunch of people started getting nervous. Our short leash committee said, we got to stop. You're way too successful. Uh, when you're doing things that are this creative, you're getting in the way of other people. Like our people are doing things on depression, you're getting in the way of our depression study. Uh, we need to have a meeting. So we had a meeting and basically at the end of the meeting they said, well, okay, we'll, we'll let you go ahead again. Uh, there had to be a period of recovery over the summer. And then our group really became very common. You could just see everybody was getting into it. Over a period of three months, our volumes were increasing, people were pushing it. It was all working on all cylinders. And then our short leash committee said we need to slow down because the portal is going to be here in July. And so don't add any more people. That's going to just make it too hard. And so we had a slow down period. And it didn't come in July. And it didn't come in November. And it didn't come in January. And it didn't come in February. And they tell me it'll be here in two weeks. So if we take a look at our experience over two years, we had 4,282 registrations. Not a large amount. Uh, uh, Palo Alto has 125,000 people on there. They're seeing, seeing 100 online visits per month. Uh, we have a smaller amount, but we were seeing over 100 patients a month easily. Some things about the registration, 7% of the people, they would sign up and then they'd sign up family members. So there was linkage to 12 others. We did 2,531 online consults and we billed for 1,159 patients. 
What was the most frequent thing that we saw online? Forget the password. <laughs> that would be the most common question, forget the password. What would be the most common complaint? Here I am, I'm sitting and I have problems. Well, here's the top 20. Number one, sinusitis, 8% of our business. Number two, depression. Number three, back pain. And then it goes and works its way down. If you take a look at the top 20 complaints, they made up about half of all of our complaints. We had a total of 293 different conditions. And they were all, there were some really weird conditions, you think. No one would probably predict, for example, circumcision. And yet, if you think about it, if I'm a male, do I want to talk to that woman receptionist about my circumcision that I might want to have? And that nurse practitioner gal? <coughs> no. But it's easier to do things online. It's easier to talk to people online. All right. If you take a look at who was doing the visits, they were all, 71% of them were women, um, working women. Uh, if you take a look at the children, uh, those kids were done by moms. If you look at the elderly, that also was done by working moms. Um, you think about it, if you have an elderly patient, you have to bring him into the office. If there was a way of preventing that, that'd be worth 35 bucks. So you do it for your parent. The youngest person was four days old. What was their complaint? Fever. Well, so that would have gone to the ER, wouldn't it? It actually was a uh, picture of a diaper rash. Nice little photo of a little kid who had a diaper rash. We were able to treat that. The oldest was 86. That was a patient with insomnia. <clears throat> the day of the week, Monday was our busiest day. Over the weekend, the on-call doctors would let things hang in there until the Monday, if we could wait for their physicians. And so instead of having a bunch of these people calling in on Monday for their doctors, they had just online visits they could do in their leisure. We did not promote Saturday and Sunday. Uh, but it was something that when people found out that we were using it and they used it, they were just amazed that they could have it done on Saturday and Sunday. What time would people do their consultations? Working hours. And that's why our turnaround time was probably six hours. Uh, patients would do it online. The doctors would do it over, uh, when they typically would do phone calls. Um, if you had a certain volume of patients, we actually carved out time. The busiest day that a physician would have with online consultations would be three to four visits. You don't have to do a lot. It's not like everybody's going to do this right off the bat. 40% of the time we say to visit, 13% of the time we ask the patient to come in. Now if you have a patient who does something online and they haven't come in, you can actually order lab tests and x-rays and things of that sort, so your, your office visit is more efficient and you have the history. Just pop that history in, and you don't have to dictate or use all those funny phrases you use in that way. 16% were protocols. 11% of the time, an uh, on-call doctor had to handle it. Uh, we looked at insurances or uh, paid amount, and 35% of the time this was billed. However, today we found out that I made an error. Uh, I forgot to add the Medicare billing, which added uh, uh, another amount, so we're up to over 42%. Um, there's a couple things about billing. Medicaid, we would bill, but then it would be denied. And we found that with Medicaid, the thing is that if you're gonna have a patient with Medicaid and they come into your office, you lose a lot of money. If you can do it online, you don't lose as much. And so we actually preferred having our Medicaid patients doing it online. They also preferred it because they didn't have to skip work. Many of you are wondering about ping-ponging. Um, most of the, this was not a huge issue. Um, people sending back. Our biggest problem was patients would say thank you. And we'd get a message saying your patient has a message for you and go in there and says thank you. We would do all sorts of things to say in our uh, templates, uh, please don't say thank you, but it's Minnesota nice, they said thank you. The second thing is physicians would oftentimes ask for more information. The most common thing is what is the pharmacy? Now the patient gave them the information for the pharmacy, they just forgot that it was in there. It's just like the Blackberry, they had to be taught again how to 